Hello students, welcome to lecture 12 of the online course on nanophotonics, plasmonics and metamaterials. In this lecture, we will be covering dispersion relation and photonic band structure. So, here is the lecture outline. So, we will introduce the eigenvalue problem on dispersion relation and block modes. Then, we will discuss the matrix optics approach for solving you know, eigenvalue problem and obtaining the block modes. We will also see how to obtain the dispersion relation, calculating photonic band structure and obtaining phase and group velocities. So, eigenvalue problem and dispersion relation. If you remember from the previous lecture that till now we have established the mathematical form of the block modes as imposed by the translational symmetry of the periodic medium. So, we were considering periodic medium where the refractive index periodically alters and these are the block modes okay? and this is the typical 1D periodic medium we have discussed in the previous lecture. We have also seen that you know for this 1D periodic medium we are able to find dispersion relation. Dispersion relation in brief we can say it is basically omega k relation and in this particular case we were also able to see that certain you know frequencies were not allowed to propagate. So, those actually gave you band gap 1, band gap 2 and so on. So, our objective here is to know how do we go to this particular dispersion relation starting from a 1D periodic medium. So, our objective here would be to solve the eigenvalue problem described by the generalized Helmholtz equation for this 1D periodic system. So, for this there are two approaches one is Fourier optics another is matrix optics. So, the first approach let us have a quick look that is called Fourier optics. Now, this approach is based on expanding the periodic function say eta of z of the medium okay, or you can say n z eta is the impedance or you can also talk in terms of uh, refractive index. Okay. And the periodic function p k z of the block mode. So, you have to expand this in Fourier series okay. and then you convert the Helmholtz differential equation into a set of algebraic equation cast in the form of matrix eigenvalue problem and this you have to solve numerically. So, that is what is known as the Fourier optics method. The other method is called matrix optics. So, in this case, this particular method is applicable to layered which are basically piecewise homogeneous like the previous example we have taken periodic alternate uh, alteration of refractive index say dielectric 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2 and so on. Okay? And you if you have those kind of layered media with planar boundaries, you are able to use uh, matrix optics method. Now, in this particular method, instead of solving the Helmholtz equation, we make direct use of the laws of propagation, reflection and refraction that is more or less you know the transfer matrix formulation that you have studied a couple of lectures back. So, you can use those you know laws of propagation, reflection, refraction at the boundaries okay, which are basically the known consequences of the Maxwell's equation. And then you can use the matrix methods developed for multilayer media, right? So when you apply matrix optics method, finally you will get a two by two matrix eigenvalue problem, from which you can obtain the dispersion relation and the block modes. So we will be mainly covering this particular matrix optics approach in this lecture and in this course, of course. So let's look into matrix optics approach. The complex amplitude of the forward and backward waves through the boundaries of multilayered medium is facilitated by the use of matrix method, something like this. So, here you can take an example of uh, multilayered media, medium 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on. So, just to make you understand how complex the system could be. So, you start with one particular wave that is partially getting reflected 
some part is getting refracted or transmitted. Now this trans this light when it is in this particular medium when it hits this particular interface between this medium and this medium some part of this light is getting partially reflected remaining is getting transmitted and again this transmitted light when it encounters this particular interface some part is getting reflected back some is getting transmitted now what happens to this reflection this is basically a backward propagating light or wave so here again at this interface it has got two options one is to transmit one is to reflect and so on so this is how things happen you know in a multi-layered medium so you start with the single wave but because of these boundaries you end up with getting you know numerous transmitted and reflected light beams now in part b this particular figure what is shown is that in each layer the forward moving waves can be named as plus okay? and the backward ones can be denoted using this minus symbol so when you are in say medium one you can say that it has got a you know all the forward moving waves can be summed up together that can be called as e1 plus and all the backward propagating waves means all these reflections they can be summed up together or collected together and you can call them as u1 minus same in layer 2 you can have u2 plus and u2 minus here you can have this is the incident medium and this is the final transmitted medium so we are just these are the two you know layers that actually form this multi-layered system in this case now there is a way this uh, u1 plus and u1 minus are uh, kind of uh, correlated so the amplitudes of this uh, forward and backward collected waves they can be represented using a column matrix so if you actually consider this particular layer by a matrix m so what you see here is that there is an incoming wave there is a backward propagating wave and there is a forward and again backward propagating wave so you can actually represent this interface using this matrix m okay so this is the column matrix so let's correlate the coefficients so you can have on the right side you have u2 plus u2 minus and this m matrix can have four elements a b c d that are correlating this amplitude to the amplitudes on the left hand side that is u1 plus and u1 minus okay so the matrix m whose elements are a b c d this is called the wave transfer matrix and it depends between depends on the optical properties of the layered medium between the two planes okay now how do you apply this for a periodic media so in a periodic media you can actually see that this a unit cell is basically repeated right so if you have uh, two alternating dielectric material say one is having high and another is having relatively low refractive index so the periodic media will be something like high low high low high low and so on so you can actually represent each unit cell using one matrix and then you can repeat it like this okay so this is the wave transfer matrix representation of a periodic medium right so you can see that you know the periodicity is basically capital lambda so here you can say this is m lambda and this is m plus one lambda what will be this one this is m minus one lambda like from here to here it is the period okay that is given by capital lambda so between one period to the other there is a matrix that is, that is correlating the parameters of um plus um minus to um plus one plus and um m plus one minus so you are basically correlating the forward propagating waves and the backward propagating waves so as you can see here a 1D periodic medium comprises of these identical segments like MO, 
okay they are called unit cells they are repeated along one direction in this case we have considered z is the direction of periodicity okay and they are separated by period capital lambda and unit cells contain repetition of lossless dielectric layers or you can say these are partially reflective mirrors why they are called partially reflected mirrors if you remember that any interface wherever there is a difference between the refractive indices okay there will be light reflection this can also be you uh, know discussed in terms of impedance mismatch so if you take the impedance of the two different layers across the interface you will see that there is some difference in the or there is a mismatch in the impedance and that is why you will get some reflection of the incident wave from that interface now forming a symmetric system generated by a generic wave transfer matrix so you can actually make a generic wave transfer matrix which looks like this what are the elements here 1 by t conjugate r over t r conjugate over t conjugate and 1 over t so this is how you are able to write a generic wave transfer matrix where r and t are basically the reflectance and transmittance this you have already seen from the Fresnel equation you know what is reflectance and transmittance uh, so if you want to calculate what is or you can this these are basically amplitude transmittance so small t can be called as transmission coefficient or you can call them as amplitude transmittance small r can be called as uh, reflection coefficient or amplitude reflectance so correspondingly you can find out what is the intensity transmittance and intensity reflectance so this is how you can calculate okay capital t equals modulus t square r equals modulus small r square so the electromagnetic wave traveling through the medium they will undergo numerous transmissions and reflections that we have seen in the previous uh, slide and that will actually give you one particular you know forward and one particular backward moving wave at each plane okay and the transfer matrix math this particular matrix method not transfer matrix this is called uh, matrix optics method this can be used to determine the block modes so let's assume u m plus minus as the complex amplitudes so plus one correspond to the forward and minus corresponds to the backward wave at any initial position z equals m lambda so here this particular one so what is m m is the number of the unit cell okay so the amplitudes elsewhere within the cell can be determined by a straightforward application of the appropriate wave transfer matrices as discussed in the previous lecture so we have seen this already that you know if you know at one position you can add that phase and you can get the amplitude at any other location now the dynamics of the amplitude varies from one cell to another which is described by the recurrence relation that means the amplitude um plus and um minus they will vary from one cell to another but in a repeated pattern so what is that pattern that is kind of like this so this is the initial amplitude and you multiply it by this particular unit cell uh, matrix that is m0 you will get the next set of amplitude of the forward and backward moving wave so these relations are used to compute the complex amplitude at any particular cell if the amplitude of the previous cell are known makes sense these are the amplitude of the previous cell this is the cell matrix so when you multiply this you get the amplitude of the current cell now let us see how do you obtain eigenvalue problem and block modes from this so by definition the modes of the periodic medium are self reproducing and why so because that they actually maintain a particular phase relation so you can say that if you take the amplitude of the forward and backward moving waves for mh cell where m is 1 or 2 or 3 or so, so dot 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 anything 
in that case if you multiply this by e to the power minus j phi that is the amount of phase accumulated while crossing this unit cell you can actually get the amplitude of the forward and backward uh, propagating waves of the next unit cell okay so here what is important that you know this phi is basically the phase accumulated over the distance of the period and the period is nothing but capital lambda so there is a name to this phase so this phase are basically altered by a common shift phi and this phi is called as block phase okay so there is a corresponding block wave number which is defined as k capital k that is given by phi over capital lambda so obviously what is that then phi which is block phase phi turns out to be k capital lambda okay so this is nothing but block phase so finding the complex amplitudes that is um plus minus and the phase phi which is defined as k capital lambda from the following equation we satisfy the self reproduction uh, condition can be cast as an eigenvalue problem so let's see how it looks like so if you take this particular problem where you know you you already seen this equation that this is the phase relationship between the uh, amplitude of the next cell and the previous cell and here if you put m equals 0 you get u0 plus u0 minus okay and what you will have you will have here basically u1 plus and u1 minus right and u1 plus and u1 minus you can go back and from here you can get that u1 plus and u1 minus can be written as m0 u0 plus and u0 minus right so if you bring this equation here so you, on the left hand side you get m0 u0 plus u0 minus is equal to e to the power minus j phi u0 plus u0 minus so this is an eigenvalue problem of this 2 by 2 unit cell matrix m0 right so here if you look into this particular equation this is your eigenvalue so the factor e to the power minus j phi is the eigenvalue okay and the vector with components u0 plus and u0 minus are basically the eigenvector right so how do you obtain the eigenvalues the eigenvalues are basically obtained by equating the determinant of the matrix that is m0 minus e to the power minus j phi times identity matrix if you take this determinant and equate it to 0 you will get the values at which you will get the those solutions are basically the eigenvalues okay now we already know that you know the reflect these are non absorbing material so amplitude of transmission amplitude transmission coefficient square plus you know square of the amplitude reflection coefficient square is equal to 1 in that case you can actually find out the values which is e to the power minus z phi okay can be given as this quantity so you have this transmission coefficient also its conjugate and this is the value that you obtain and from this you can write that you know if you separate it out to the real and imaginary part on both sides you can find that cos phi can be written as real of 1 over the amplitude transmission coefficient so real of 1 over t so keep this equation in mind so now let us try to obtain what is the dispersion relationship always remember dispersion relationship is basically the relationship between the block wave number k and the angular frequency omega that is we are looking for omega k relationship okay so the previous equation that you have seen 
this one this equation so this equation provides the eigen values which is exponential minus j phi of the unit cell matrix and this is basically the progenitor or the source of the dispersion relation for the 1d periodic medium so how it works so we already know that phi that is the phase can be given as capital k that is the block wave number times the period so phi phase is basically proportional to k okay and t the transmission is also associated with frequency at different different wavelength or frequency will have different transmission so t can be written as t omega right so these two are related through the phase delay associated with the propagation through the unit cell so you can actually write that you know cos 2 pi k over g times phi is nothing but real of 1 over t which is a function of omega so this one directly correlates your k and omega and hence it can be named as dispersion relation now the question arises what is g here g is basically the fundamental spatial frequency of the periodic medium so what is the period period is capital lambda so g will be 2 pi over capital lambda right so this particular function that you see here on the left side cos 2 pi k over g is nothing but a periodic function of this k which has got a period of g okay so g is nothing but 2 pi over capital lambda and this gives multiple solutions for you know this equation for any given omega okay and that is how you are able to obtain that dispersion relation which is typically shown in the, as in the photonic band diagram now but the solutions separated by the period g they are not independent they basically lead to identical block modes so the domain of the dispersion relation is typically limited with the values of k ranging from interval of minus g by 2 to g by 2 that means it is basically ranging from minus pi by capital lambda to plus pi by capital lambda which is nothing but the Brillouin zone so that is where the concept of Brillouin zone comes from and that allows your phase okay phi to be limited to an interval of minus pi to pi so once you know the phase variation from minus pi to pi you are basically covering the entire 2 pi right so after that it is just a repetition so there is no point computing those okay so this range this interval can give you the interval of phase starting from minus pi to pi also we need to keep in mind that this cost function is an even function of k so for each value of omega there are two possible values of k okay two independent values and they could be equal in magnitude but opposite in sign within the same brilliant zone okay or within the brilliant zone so brilliant zone is from uh, minus pi to pi in terms of phase or you can say it is from minus g by 2 to g by 2 in terms of k so this actually gives us that they are independent block waves so one solution is for you know um, forward propagating wave another solution is for the backward waves so dispersion relation gives you the photonic band structure so for dispersion relation will also tell you the multiple spectral bands which can be typically classified into two regions or two regimes so one is propagation regime so spectral band within which capital k that is the block wave number is real those are the propagating modes so in those cases the real part of 1 over t which is a function of omega okay that is less than 1 and these bands can be numbered as 
1, 2 and so on starting from the lowest. Make sense? And there could be other cases where in some spectral bands this k is complex. That means they correspond to evanescent waves. Okay? It means these waves will get rapidly attenuated and they cannot propagate within that periodic medium. So in this case if you see they will give you Okay, ignore this particular sign, it is only modulus of real 1 over t and that will come out to be greater than 1. And these bands behave as stop bands okay, of the diffraction grading. So, they are also called as photonic band gap PVG or forbidden band gap since no existing propagation mode are possible in this particular case. So now let us look into the calculation of uh, photonic band structure by taking an example of periodic stack of partially reflective mirrors. So here is a stack of periodic stack you, you should say of partially reflective mirror and the wave traveling along the axis of the periodic stack is in the direction of z. What is the period here? capital lambda. Now, let us see how we actually characterize this. So, the dispersion relation for a wave traveling along the axis of the periodic stack of identical that is very important identical partially reflective lossless mirrors which are separated by capital lambda. So, in this case the power reflectance is modulus of r square and intensity transmittance is nothing but what is not reflected is getting transmitted because these are non absorbing case. So, you can say modulus of t square that is transmittance is nothing but 1 minus modulus of small r square. Now, let us use the matrix optics approach to derive explicit expression for elements of the scattering matrix of the composite system in terms of the elements of the scattering matrix of the constituent system that is we will take the uh, elements of the uh, unit cell and we will try to get the matrix elements for the overall system. So, the matrix M whose elements are say A, B, C, D you can call them as wave transfer matrix which we have seen in this particular equation. So, they depend on the optical properties of the layered media between the two planes right so we have already seen this particular case that you can obtain those equations or those elements from fresnel reflection coefficients an alternative to the wave transfer matrix that relates the four complex amplitude of the at, at the two edges of layered medium is a scattering matrix S matrix. So, you can also have S matrix and S matrix are more popularly used in um, describing transmission lines, microwave circuits and scattering systems. Okay? So, in this case the outgoing waves are basically expressed in terms of incoming waves something like this. So, S matrix is used to describe uh, transmission lines, macro circuits and scattering systems. So, in this case the outgoing waves are basically expressed in terms of the incoming waves. So, here is a schematic representation of S matrix. So, you see that you have the incoming wave U1 plus and you have one outgoing wave that is U2 plus. Now, in this case this is a reflection, but you are actually trying to represent it in terms of outgoing wave because the reflection is also outgoing. So, you put it on the right side. So, you call it as U1 minus and the reflection from the other side becomes kind of incoming wave. So, you can actually take that U2 minus okay, as a incoming one. So, in that case you can simply see that what are the two outgoing uh, 
outgoing waves from this particular system that is u2 plus and u1 minus so u2 plus and u1 minus are the outgoing and what are the incoming u1 plus and u2 minus so u1 plus and u2 minus and you are trying to correlate this outgoing set of uh, waves with the incoming set of waves so what are the coefficients so u2 plus as you know u2 plus will be nothing but u1 plus times the transmission that is t12 so t12 times u1 plus okay also it will have another component coming from this one so whatever is this wave whatever is getting reflected that will also contribute to u2 plus so you have you can have this is 2 this is 1 so you can this reflection coefficient will be called r21 so you will have r21 times u2 minus is it clear so you will have u2 plus that is given as t12 times u1 plus so t12 times u1 plus this one so there is also one contribution coming from this one some part of it will get reflected and add up to this outgoing wave so that will be r21 times u2 minus the other one also you can easily make it so this one u1 minus is nothing but r12 u1 plus so whatever is incidenting some part is getting reflected so that reflection is this one r12 u1 plus and then whatever you are putting here some part is getting transmitted and that also comes back as u1 minus so that is t21 times u2 minus so this equation u1 minus is nothing but r12 u1 plus plus t21 u2 minus clear so unlike the wave transfer matrix these elements here in scattering matrix they have um, direct signif physical significance something like you know if you take r12 and r21 they are basically the forward amplitude transmittance and reflection that is they are basically the transmittance and uh, reflection coefficient of the wave incident from the left side on the other hand if you see t21 and t1 t21 and r21 they are basically amplitude transmittance and uh, reflectance in the backward direction that is for wave that is coming from the right side so it is easy to you know correlate uh, physically what is happening in the case of s matrix now for a homogeneous layer of width d so this interface we have seen uh, that what happens with the incoming and outgoing incoming and outgoing or you can say what is falling getting reflected and so on so for a homogeneous layer of width d and refractive index n that is shown here the complex amplitudes of the collected waves at the planes indicated by the arrow so if you are looking about the complex amplitude at this particular planes so you can call this as u1 okay so this is u1 forward one will be u1 plus backward one will be u1 minus this will be u2 okay the amplitudes here will be u2 the forward one will be u2 plus and the reverse one will be u2 minus so how they are related they are propagating or they are traveling this particular distance so they will add up a phase so u2 plus will be simply u1 plus times e to the power minus j phi what is phi phi will be n k naught small k naught and d okay n is a refractive index k naught is the free space uh, wave vector or wave number and d is the thickness of that layer so that is similarly you can also correlate what is u1 minus and u2 minus so that is how you can obtain the 
web transfer matrix as well as scattering matrix for this particular case. So, if you see that web transfer matrix M will look like exponential minus j phi 0 0 exponential plus j phi. Whereas, the scattering matrix because scattering matrix will try to represent all outgoing in terms of incoming not left and right. Okay. So, it will look like e to the power minus j phi 0 0 e to the power minus j phi. Okay. So, that is the only difference between the um, web matrix or web transfer matrix and scattering matrix. So, now let us consider a wave transmitted through a system which is described by S matrix which has got these elements T12, T21, R12, R21. So, it these are easy to handle because we already know this transmission and reflection coefficient from the Fresnel equation. So, let us assume that you know this system has got uh, two such separate systems okay, and these are the S matrix for these two separate systems. So, by multiplying the two associated M matrix, so you can convert this into M matrix, this one into M matrix, you can multiply the M matrix and then convert it back to the scattering matrices. Okay, and you will be able to obtain the overall transmittance and reflection. So, overall transmittance in this case will be T13, which is given by T12, T23, okay, over 1 plus R12, R3. So, this is how you will be analyzing the multi layer system. Okay, you can also find out what is the reflection coefficient for this overall system. Okay. So, one important thing is that the relationship between uh, M and S matrix in this case. So, as I mentioned M matrix are having four elements A, B, C, D and they are not directly the reflection and transmission coefficient whereas the S matrix are directly uh, the reflection and transmission coefficient. So, sometimes it is easy to deal with S matrices. Okay? Now, in this particular case, the transmission of a plane wave through a cascade of two separate system that we have seen, which are separated by a distance of d. Okay. Now, we have assumed that if the two cascaded systems are mediated by propagation through a homogeneous medium, it means the medium in between is a homogeneous medium, then the overall transmittance and reflectance will also have this extra factor adding up that is exponential minus j phi and phi is nothing but uh, n k naught d. Okay? So, that way the equations will also get slightly modified. Okay? So, as I mentioned here the phase phi is nothing but uh, n k naught d and d is the propagation distance n is nothing but the refractive index of this particular medium inside. So, with that what we learnt is that um, we understood the overall reflectance and transmittance and for this periodic stack of identical partially reflective lossless mirrors, okay, using the equations this and this you can obtain what is the dispersion relation or you can find out that cos of 2 pi k by g is nothing but 1 over mod t cos omega over omega b. So, here a new term omega b has come. So, omega b, so g you already know g is 2 pi by capital lambda that is the special frequency spatial ah, space related. So, spatial frequency and that you have omega b which is c pi by capital lambda. So, this is particularly a plot of the dispersion relation for a period set of periodic mirrors. So, here certain uh, values have been assumed like modulus t square has been taken as 0 0.5 and they have been considered to have a separation of capital lambda. Omega b is c pi by capital lambda, g is 2 pi by capital lambda those are all fine. So, only important thing is the value of t is already assumed here 
and you can see this red dotted straight lines they are basically the approximation of a homogeneous medium so if you assume the entire medium to be homogeneous in which omega by k equals c okay or you can carefully work this out and see that omega by k will be omega b times g by 2 that also comes out to be c so you will have this straight lines okay so these are basically the homogeneous medium approximation so what it tells you that you know this graph tells you that because of the periodicity how much the dispersion relation deviates from the homogeneous medium and in homogeneous medium you see there is no band cap also so all the bands are allowed all the bands are allowed means all the frequencies have some k vector it means at all frequencies you have solution for waves which has got real propagation constants okay but here in this case you can see it starts with a band gap then there is some band which is allowed then again there is a band gap then again there is some band where the propagation is allowed then again there is a band gap and so on okay now yeah this is what i have already discussed that here the photonic band gaps there is no real solution so you don't have anything and all the band gap frequencies are basically centered around omega omega or you say omega b 2 omega b and so on 3 omega b so the frequencies they these particular frequencies they do not permit any propagating mode rather in that case if the wave is not allowed to propagate inside the periodic medium what will happen in terms of reflectance you will see that they have unity reflectance and this is a particular system where you also see that you know the lowest photonic band gap is at omega equals 0. So if you take a real example with some values like n1 equals 1.5 and n2 equals 3.5 and keep the thickness of the two layers similar. So this is one layer this is another layer and then you are repeating this unit cell. So this is the period okay period of the unit cell. So, if you take this and you try to calculate the dispersion relation, you will see that you know the photonic band gaps have center frequencies at omega b here also, omega b and its multiples like omega b, 2b, 3b and so on and they occur at either the uh, brillion zone center that is k equals 0 or at the edges that is k equals plus minus g by 2. So, this is the range of the brillion zone. So, k value starts from you know minus g by 2 to g by 2 as we discussed before. So, here you see that initially all uh, frequencies are permitted. At omega b you have a particular band gap, again at 2 omega b you have a band gap and so on. Okay? And this is how it deviates from the homogeneous medium approximation. So, these are the values associated with this particular band gap. Now, in this setup of partially reflective mirrors, the frequency region surrounding to omega equals 0 does not fall in the band gap. It has got some solution. So, it is good. In this case, um, there are some propagating modes possible here. Okay? Now, dielectric materials with lower con contrast, they will have band gaps of smaller width. Now, here you see the contrast is really really good so n1 is 1.5 n2 is 3.5 now if you take two material where the difference between n1 and n2 like you can say delta n is less this band gap will also become very narrow okay so if you want a larger band gap you choose two materials which have higher contrast between them okay and this red straight lines we already um, mentioned that this is how light would have behaved if we have a homogeneous medium with refractive index of the mean of n1 and n2 fine so from this you also can derive the information about the phase and group velocities so the propagation constant capital k it correlates to the phase velocity as well so phase velocity will be omega over capital k 
So once you know the phase velocity, you can also find out what is the effective refractive index that is small n effective. Okay, that is C naught over the phase velocity. So you will get C naught capital K over omega. Fine. So this is we are taking only up to this one. So you, here you can see that clearly see what is the photonic band gap. Okay. And this is the plot of um, effective refractive index that is C naught k over omega. Okay. So, that is basically the um, effective refractive index. We can also find out what is the group velocity that is V equals d omega by dk, okay, which corresponds to the pulse propagation in the medium. So, any pulse will have a um, you know frequency spread okay means it will not be monochromatic it will have certain uh, frequencies so you should calculate the group velocity in that case so group velocity should be obtained by d omega by dk so accordingly you can also find out what is the effective index seen by that group or you can call it effective group index that is also defined as uh, capital n effective and that can be given as C naught over this V. So, you get C naught D omega D k by D omega. Okay? Now, these velocities can be calculated at any point of the dispersion relation curve by deriving the slope D omega by D k and you can also take the ratio of omega by k. So, as shown here, you can also you can calculate what is small m effective what is your capital N effective? What is N bar? N bar, this is the mean value, okay? Mean refractive index. So, the figure here, the first one shows the dispersion relation of a alternating layer of dielectric medium and this two shows the effective index of one particular frequency and this is the group index, okay? So, here what you see you are able to clearly see two frequency bands where the propagation is possible and there is a definite photonic band gap okay and for lower frequencies within the first photonic band you can see that this is how the effective um, index is so you can say that n effective is very close to the average effective index so initially this dotted line and this blue line they are very much overlapping okay so here also you see they are very much overlapping but as you keep on you know going further okay with omega or you can say with uh, wavelength it is expected that at longer wavelength uh, the material becomes homogeneous so k is reducing means wavelength will be increasing so this is the case where you see more homogenized picture of your periodic medium but as k is increasing your wavelength is basically reducing so you will be able to see the definite structures and that is where your you will be deviating from the line this particular red dotted line which represents a homogenized medium okay so here also you can see with frequency increase so this way the frequency is increasing okay this way the frequency is increasing so it's better to correlate with frequency and wavelength and this is the spatial period okay so you can correlate with the frequency here that at lower frequency wavelengths are high so you are seeing much uh, homogeneous picture whereas um, when you go for higher frequency you have lower wavelength you start deviating from the mean refractive index okay that is the crux of this particular thing and at the second at the bottom of the second band that is here you will see that you know the n effective is much smaller than the mean uh, refractive index so that is how it works that you know with the frequency increase initially n effective 
goes way above the mean value but then suddenly it encounters a band gap and after the band gap at the bottom of the second band you will see that the ineffective starts from a value which is much slower or much smaller than the mean refractive index. So n effective increases at higher frequencies and with with approaching to uh, n bar which is the mean value at the middle of the band. Understood? Now this drop of n effective from a value above average which is just below the band gap to a value which is below average just above the band gap is due to the significantly different spatial distribution of the corresponding block modes. So there is a band gap because of which the block modes which are propagating here and here are significantly different. So we do not expect them to have you know similar kind of feature and that is why there is a drastic change in this effective refractive index as well. And these block modes are orthogonal to each other. So there is no similarity basically between these block modes. Now the block modes at the top of the lower band has greater energy in the dielectric layers with higher refractive index so that the effective index is basically greater than the average. And if you look into the block modes at the bottom of the upper band, it will be reverse. It means in that case, greater energy is localized in the layers which are having lower refractive index. And that is why the overall effective index is lower than the average. So these are like two different mode configuration for the two different block modes, which is present here and here. Lastly, let us also look into the um, frequency dependence of the capital N effective, which is the group effective index. And you see the group effective index increases at the uh, edges of the band gap, either from below or above. Okay? In both cases, it is behaving the same way. And uh, it, that means the group velocity is much smaller. So when index is larger the groove velocity is smaller it means when you are approaching a band gap you will see that the waves are much slower so the optical pulses are significantly slow near band gaps edge so that way you can actually make different devices based on this particular concept so with that we'll stop here today thank you any questions you can drop an email to this particular email address and we'll see you in the next lecture bye